Thanks for stopping them horses. Now get on down there. Come on. Where are you going? Get over there and get that stage. Come on, old man. Hurry it up! You cover them, Wilt. I'll get the box. We're after that gold shipment. I'm afraid you're a bit late. Shut up. There ain't no gold in here. Go look in the boot. The driver mentioned it went out yesterday. Truth. All right, get your boots off. Get them off, or you'll die in them. All right, get walking. Get walking. Go on. Too good. I sure did have my heart set on some gold. We're just gonna have to go down to Stockton and get it. Hey! Would you mind going to the next window? I was just cl Oh, well now. We'd like to open up an account. An account? But yes, ma'am. You've come to the right bank. And, uh, the right window. <laughs> oh, if you'll just fill out this form. Uh, it's just one thing. Uh, we heard tell there's been some robberies around here. Is this, uh, bank safe? You sure of that? You got a good, strong vote. Well, there it is, right there. It, uh, it's the latest. Came all the way from St. Louis. Hey, if it wasn't safe, you can bet the Cattlemen's Association wouldn't put their money in it every Friday. Sure looks strong. Uh, we have a deputy making the rounds every night also. Every hour on, on the hour. On the hour. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Sign the papers, Grady. Oh, uh, there's a, a pen right over there. Um... You and, uh, and your husband are going to live nearby? Well, it depends if we can find the property that we're looking for. And uh, he's my brother, not my husband. 
Oh. Well, if, if I may um, offer my services, perhaps I could have the pleasure of showing you around some afternoon. Uh, there are some very, very fine places for sale. I don't know if a lady would be safe with you when you're out of your cage. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll let you know. Grady, you can take me to lunch. Him and his old vault. Came all the way from St. Louis. Hey, hey. Maybe we ought to send him a letter back there, you know. Uh, compliment them on it and all. <laughs> After we bust it open. Well, uh, you pay the check. And um, be sure and leave a big tip. We're going to be able to afford it. Jesse? Supplies. No, you go get them. I got a hankering for some five card draw poker. You gonna play poker? Hmm. Dilly, you make yourself noticeable. People notice me anyhow. Well, yeah, Carl and Wilt are waiting first. I'll be out later. Besides, I feel lucky today. Poker, young lady. Not part cheesy. I think I'll sit right here. We well, won't feel a bit good taking your money, ma'am. Name's Dilly. Dilly Shanks. And I won't feel a bit bad about taking yours. Playing cards with a woman, that's no game. Whose deal? Yours. We uh, each get five cards. Dollar ante, five's the limit. If that don't scare you off, not. Deal. I'll try to. I ain't even gonna try. Two. And, um, I think I'll help myself to one. Cowboy. Looks like today's not my day. Oh, day's not over yet. Well, let's play cards. A dollar. You got yourself bit, mister. Anna Rates. You're bluffing, that's what I think. I'm bluffing? Raise me. A call. Feel that straight, slick as butter. Yeah, it was slick, all right, just like every other hand you've dealt. Now, you try to tell me something, mister. I think you've been jennying up the cards. That's what I think. You said that nice and loud. Now, don't you keep me waiting too long for an apology. Well, I, uh... Come on, mister. You can speak a lot plainer than that. Apologize. Why, thank you. Well, I guess that ends the game. Uh, say, Heath, are you going to have time to help me with that fencing tomorrow? Or do your feet hurt you too much? Nothing wrong with my hands. I'll tackle that section down by the sawmill bridge. Thanks, Heath. Miss Dilly, if you'll excuse me. 
<laughs> Do you work for him? No, he's a neighbor. Just helping out. They say God helps them that helps themselves. Pretty hard-hearted, aren't you? As I have to be, when I have to be. Anyways, that critter ought to know it ain't right to call a lady a cheat. I think he just learned that lesson. I tell you what, he. My. That sure is a pretty name. Um, seeing that I'm the big winner, how about me buying you a drink? Hmm? No, thanks. I gotta be going. But, uh, when I'm ready, I'll buy you that drink, Mr. Dilly. What you want us to do? Sit around and crochet doilies? <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's funny, Will. Oh, hush up. You two go into town, you get into nothing but trouble. It took you so long. So you want to do that bank and get out of here? I want us some money. That's what took me so long. Besides, we're going to let that bank wait. Wait? We know how to get in and out of there. What do we got to wait for? Grady, you wouldn't know beans in a bag. You heard the teller blabbing about the Cattlemen's Association making a big deposit on Friday? Yeah, maybe so, but I sure get jumpy having to hang around. Yeah, me too, Dilly. Why don't we just grab that gold like we planned and be on our way? And just forget about the extra money. Hmm. Not by a jugful. We'll take the bank on Friday. But I don't like it around here. Well, I do. So that settles that. to move it. Oh. What happened? Oh. oh, my horse, it just ran off. The horse doesn't look too wild to me. Well, who knows what goes on in a horse's head? Or in a woman's? What's that? Well, it could have happened. I doubt it. I don't think too many horses got the nerve to run away with you. You know, I'm beginning to like it around here more and more. Well, are you planning on settling here? Well, my brother Grady and I are looking for some land to buy. We aim to be real neighborly. You married? Nope. Promised anyone? No. Well, how about you being real neighborly? And Well, you must know some places around here for sale. How about showing me a few? Well, maybe. If uh, you promised to teach me to play poker like that. <laughs> Well, my daddy was a gambler on them Mississippi River boats. They used to call him Velvet Harry because he dressed so well and had such good manners. He used to have his hair cut twice a week. And he sure knew his way around a deck of cards. Why, well, ever since I was just little Dickens, he used to play with me. I think the first words I ever learned were, Annie up, folks. Well, I'll tell you what, Dilly. I was just about ready to finish up here. If you're heading into town, well, I'll buy you that drink now. How would you like a nice, uh, lemonade? Lemonade? Why, yes. I think I'd like that. Well, 
going to the bank with me, Audrey? Oh, no, thank you. I want to look at some clothes. Well, enough clothes on from Europe to sink the boat. I said look, not buy. See you at Jared's. Just about to try that on. What do you think? I think it's very becoming, but I, I think it could be straightened a little. Well, maybe you could use some straightening yourself. You did ask me. I wasn't talking about the hat. I was talking about you and hate. Well, what about us? Who are you? I happen to be. A very close acquaintance of his, if you want to know. A close acquaintance? Mm. More than a close acquaintance, if you want to know. And I'm telling you, whoever you may be, <laughs> that you just better keep away from him or you're going to be sorry. I gather you have a romantic interest in him, Miss, Miss Shanks. And you gather rightly. Now, look, um... I don't aim to get ugly about this. It's just that, well, love, we have an understanding, that's all. I see. Well, you certainly don't have to worry about me, Miss Shanks. I could never be a rival of yours. Glad to hear it. Besides, Heath and I, we plan to see a lot more of each other. So if you'll just excuse me. I have some things to buy. Then she said, you'd better keep away from him or you'll be sorry. Well, you should have told her that uh, you were his sister. Audra, you could have been shot stone cold dead. I didn't think of that. Well, you know what they say. Hell hath no fury like a... Well, for a minute there, I thought I forgot to put my pants on. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Uh, say, Nick, I won't be able to check out that will this afternoon. Oh, it can wait. You, uh... Have something more interesting to do? I promised to show somebody around the old Webster place. Uh, anyone I know? I don't think so. Pass it, butter. It's right in front of you. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Morning, Mother. Good morning, Heath. Good morning. Well, I know it's very early in the morning, but I detect something's going on. What is it? Nothing, really. I, I was just about to tell Heath I met a friend of his yesterday in town. I... A uh, Miss Shanks? She seems to think quite a lot of him. Was that right? Pass the sugar. Right in front of you. Oh. oh, more than that. She just about challenged Audra here to a duel. I understand Audra wouldn't stand a chance. She draws like a hired gun. Oh, she sounds like a fascinating creature. I'd like to meet her. Oh, we'd all like to meet her. Meantime, why don't we let Heath have his breakfast in peace? Yes, we ought to let him have a peaceful breakfast. Because he's probably in for an exciting afternoon. Of course, it'll be a lot of work, but there's water here, and that's the main thing. Water, that's the main thing. How many head of cattle your brother figured on running? Well, I don't know for sure. You like this place, Heath? Well, who wouldn't? It's some of the best land in the valley. Do you ever think about settling down, having a place of your own? Oh, I've got my own place. You do? My family and I, we run a few head. Family? That ain't the same as having a place of your own. You know, like a man and a woman having theirs. Do you ever think about that? Well, it passes through my head every once in a while. Funny. I never thought about such a thing in my whole life before. Yeah, well, I uh, guess we better be getting back, huh? I sure do like you, Heath. Thank you, Dilly. I, I like you. Well, that ain't what I mean. What I mean is, uh, well, I guess I mean I love you. Love me. We just met. Oh, well, don't you go laughing at me. Well, I know it ain't a girl's place to be saying it first, but when I have something on my mind, I say it right out. Okay? Okay. Well, if you're surprised, it ain't nothing compared to what I am. Why, if somebody told me I'd be feeling this way, I... But I do. That's all there is to it. Why else would I feel like, well, like there's a big bell ringing inside me every time I even just think about you? Do you love me, Heath? Just a little bit? 
Well, you don't have to answer that. Not yet. All I know is that I love you, that I want you, and that I'm gonna have you. Hey, that wasn't so bad, was it? No, Dilly, that, uh, that was nice. Well, now you understand how things are. I don't think you understand. When I love a woman, it's got to be in my own time. Why, sure, he. Take your time. Take all the time you want. And it's got to be in my own way. And she's, well, well she's just got to let it happen. And I've got to do all the courting. Sure, he. You can't help the way you feel, neither. I understand. Let's get back. Swipe it, I bought it. Hey, get your hands off that. I don't want you to mark the trim. What'd you go spend all our money for? You don't need a saddle like that. Besides, it's kind of big for you in it. Quit your bleeding. It ain't for me. Well, who's it for then? A personal friend of mine. Not that it's any of your how to do. Hey, just what I've been aiming to do. Take a bath. Well, now, wait, wait a minute. It's my turn now. After me. You, uh, um, you, uh, figuring on giving this saddle to that big cowboy you've been seeing? <laughs> you must be pretty sweet on him. You know he was one of them passengers on the stage, don't you? I was wondering where I've seen him before. Now, as to whether I am sweet on him or not, what if I am? Oh, uh, well, uh, no one's saying that you can't have your fun, Dilly. <laughs> You've done it before. It's just that uh, you uh, start getting serious, and that's trouble. That's nothing but trouble. you got to remember that we got that bank waiting for us, and then we're on our way. Well, I guess this is as good a time as any to tell you. I'm staying in Stockton. Now, what kind of talk is that? Tell you what are you going to do in Stockton over by yourself? Well, that's just plain dumb. It ain't so dumb to own your own ranch. There's a place around here I can get reasonable. Besides, I'm getting married soon. You? Married? <laughs> ain't pretty good. <laughs> uh, did he ask you? Just about. Well, he ain't the type that goes around passing out proposals to every girl he meets. But he's just as good as told me that we'll be getting married soon. Now, uh, you know that there ain't no cowboy makes enough money to keep a wife. Especially one like you. He's got some land of his own. And a few heads. That, on top of what I intend to buy for us, you do pretty good. Well, uh, let me see now. Uh, you you plan on settling down and working a few acres of land and running a few head and, and uh, living happily ever after, huh? You just called the turn, Grady. Me and he, we're going to settle down, work the spread, put in a few saddle stock, and the best breed of cattle. And I'm going to have my own garden, just outside the kitchen. But naturally, someday, we'll have a few children, five or six. And they'll work, work right alongside their daddy. Gosh. Can we come see you? Sure. But I don't want you hanging around too long. That is nice. That's nice. That's real pretty. But uh, where are you going to get the money for this ranch? For my share of the bank on Friday. That's still on. I'm going with you. It's just going to be my last time, that's all. Then you boys are going to be out on your own. Uh, let's us uh, get out of here and give her a little privacy. What are we going to do without Dilly? And you know she's the one who does all the figuring. There ain't no reason why we can't do all right without her. You think that you're fooling yourself? 
We ain't nothing without her. You know it. Maybe she'll let me come stay with her when she gets married. She ain't getting married. Well, Grady, you heard what she said. I said she ain't getting married. We're gonna make sure that that cowboy don't marry nobody's sister. said that. Oh, he lived by it, too. Had to be in the boss of the lumber company. I guess that was before he became a riverboat gambler. I never could remember which one was first. Come here. How you like the saddle, Heath? <laughs> well, that's probably the fanciest saddle I ever saw in my life. It's yours. Dooley, I can't accept this. Well, why not? That rig of yours is all worn out. Well, that's not it. Uh, a girl giving a man an expensive gift like that, well, it just isn't right. Well, I don't see why not. You care for somebody. You just naturally want to give them things. Dilly, if anyone around here is going to be given presents, it's going to be me. You want to repay me for it? You can take me out to dinner. And I do mean dinner. Let's see, steaks, wine, lots of them fancy little cakes. Dilly, this, this saddle's worth a thousand dinners. You just talk me into it. A thousand dinners, starting tonight. But, Dilly. Dilly, there are a few things we got to talk about. Later. After dinner. Come on. Yes, it is. A gift from someone? How'd you know? Because I know you, and that's not the kind of a saddle you'd buy for yourself. From Dilly? Yeah. Well, she must think an awful lot of you. I guess so. And you, Heath? She's not like any girl I ever met, Mother. She's one of a kind. I've heard stories. Well, they're true. She's as ladylike as a rebel yell. She gambles. She uh, she chases a man instead of the other way around. She uh, says exactly what she feels. I guess you might say she's like a little girl. Just plumb full of surprises. You never know what she's going to do next. But uh, when I'm with her, I... Well, I don't know. I, I feel like smiling all the time. But you're returning the saddle. Well, it's the third time today I've loaded it up. I don't want to hurt her feelings, but I can't accept this. Otherwise, she'll think you feel something you really don't. Huh? That's exactly it, Mother. And whatever it is I feel, I, I don't think it's love. Then she has a right to know that, if you're sure. I'm sure. Ranch. This is the Barkley Ranch, miss. All of it? From the gate. The one back yonder, about five miles? That's the one. Oh, wait. Miss Barkley, this young lady is looking for Mr. Heath. He left for town. Oh. Oh, well, that's all right. I was just out riding, and I thought I'd drop by. But it's okay, because he's going to be taking me out to dinner tonight. You must be Miss Shanks. Dilly. Please, come in and have some coffee with me. Oh, all right. Silas. He must have told you about me. A little. Well, he ain't exactly talkative. Not like I am. 
I think maybe that's one of the reasons I feel about him the way I do. Anyway, I could never get along with anybody like me. You're in love with Heath, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. And that's coming straight at me. And I'll tell you something else. He loves me, too. And one of these days, we aim to be married. Oh? Well, he hasn't exactly come out with it yet. But he's sure been hitting rap. Miss Shanks, I... Dilly, I know Heath pretty well. And he's not the kind that hints around. Are you really sure he feels this way? Well, I know him pretty well, too. And I say we aim to be married. And I hope you ain't got to talk against it. No. No, I'd be happy to welcome any girl of Heath's choice. It's just that I feel... Well, maybe you don't think I'm good enough for a place like this. Well, let me tell you, my daddy was in the cotton business down south, and we had a house big as this, even bigger. Well, it's not a question of a house or how big it is. I'm talking about Heath's feelings for you. You see, Dilly... When you love somebody and you want a future with them, it's very easy to misunderstand. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I know what you're talking about. I ain't that green. You just don't take to me. Well, that's plain. But it ain't gonna stop us. No, Dilly, no, you're mistaken. You pick a fight with me, Mrs. Barkley, and you're gonna lose. And maybe even get hurt in the bargain. You could have taken care of them yourself, Heath. But I sure am glad I come right. Something wrong? You always clean a gun like that, Dilly? Well, my daddy used to teach the Army how to use and protect their weapons. So every time I shoot... Every time you shoot? Well, when I'm out hunting and all. Heath, well, what's the matter? You said you came in on that stage Thursday morning. You and your brother? I don't recollect that. You don't recollect saying it, or you don't recollect coming in on that stage Thursday? Come to think of it, I couldn't have been on the stage Thursday. That was the day there was some sort of fuss. You were on the stage Thursday. Well, I don't recollect saying that. Well, I just, uh, there was talk. Yes, that's it. We come in Friday morning. You came in on the stage Friday mm -hmm. morning? Mm-hmm. Dilly, there's no stage in to Stockton until late Friday afternoon. Now, who are those men? How should I know? Because they stopped shooting when they saw you. Four riders who held up that stage. Their leader cleaned a gun like you just did. You're talking crazy. I don't think so, Dilly. It was you who led those riders. It was you who killed that stage driver. Now, those men, who are they?
Them three's my brothers. And the four of you, a gang. How long you been in this business? Ever since we found out farming a hard rock farm was as good as being dead. So you took up robbing and killing people? That's right. We did. I've been all over, seen plenty, had exciting times, and I liked it. That's the truth. I did like it. I guess we just weren't the type to sit on a hard rock farm and without a dime in our pockets. So to put a dime in your pockets, your brothers are ready to kill for $6.20. That's exactly what I've got on me. That ain't why the bushwhacked you. They tried to kill you because of me. I told them that we were getting married. Married? How could you tell them that? You know, that's not true. But you don't understand, Heath. I've given up all that wild stuff. I'm gonna settle down and make you a good wife. Tilly, just because you want something, that doesn't mean that's the way things are. Well, what about the Webster place? You said you liked it, and you said you want to settle down someday and be married. Nobody try and make you a better wife than me, Heath. I swear it. Besides, I never met anybody like you before. I'd do anything for you. I'm so in love with you. Dilly, I'm not in love with you. And even if I could be, this changes everything. Can't you see that? Sure you're not in love with me. Rich folks never take to anybody but their own kind. I've seen that big house of yours and that fancy butler. What would you want with plain folks like me? Dilly, I saw you kill a man. Forget that. I don't think I could. Well, I help you forget it, Heath. Heath, I've changed. I know I have. I'd do anything in the world for you. I'd be anything. Please help me. I'm sorry, Dilly. I'd like to walk away and forget I ever met you, but I can't. Turn around. You would have turned me in, wouldn't you? I'd have turned you in. You just got to naturally tell the truth, don't you? Killing me is not going to change things. Well, it might make me feel a whole lot better. Now, I've got another plan for you, so you just get off. Come on, move. Time up, Will. Get on over there. Up man. against the post. Put your hands behind your back. Time up. Well, now, Dilly, isn't that a funny way to treat your intended? Don't you give me none of your jaw. He ain't going to be nobody's intended. Then what's he doing here? We're going to use him when we take the bank. Use him? Oh, ain't you got nothing in that head of yours? With him around, nobody's going to start shooting at us. <laughs> Boy, you sure are singing a different tune about him now, ain't you? You never mind my tune. He tried to make a fool out of me, and I don't take that off nobody. Tried to? I think he'd done it. Look, you said all you're going to say on that, because I don't want to hear no more about it. No, sir. Nobody at that bank's going to start shooting at him. Him and his family own half of this valley. What are you going to do with him when we're through? Well, there'll probably be some shooting there. He's liable to be hit by a stray bullet while we're riding out, huh? <laughs> Grady? That's the best idea you had all year. <laughs> I sure didn't expect him home early. From what I saw of Dilly, saying goodnight's not going to be that easy. Pretty girl, full moon shining down. Could have just changed his mind, you know.
You wouldn't have heard thunder. Go on. Go on! What? You know, this is playing crazy, Dilly. I know that bank. It's too well guarded. You'll never get away with it. Well, if you'd loved me like I loved you, none of this would have happened. I can't help the way I feel. Well, you never gave it a chance. I know I've done some bad things. I ain't saying anything different. But I got some good in me, Heath. I know I do. If you'd just taken to me, all that good would have come pouring out. You wouldn't have noticed anything else. It just doesn't work that way, Dilly. Well, that's all you can say, ain't it? Well, I wouldn't take your love now if you offered it to me on a silver tray. Trouble with you is you don't know what a woman is. A real woman, like me. I know you're a real woman, Dilly. You don't know nothing. You ever been kissed? Like this? Hmm? Or like this? <clears throat> All right, Dilly. We're getting out of here right now. wasn't worth it? I'm glad it's over. It ain't over yet. Dilly? Not until I give him one last thing to remember me by. But, but he's gone. Dilly, he's got our fastest horse, and we can't catch him in the dark. The ranch is there. It hasn't moved. Mr. Heath Barkley won't be so high and mighty with that fancy house of his a pile of ashes. You, you mean burn him out? Right down to the ground. Dilly, he's going to get the sheriff. We got no time. We got time? They ain't going to look for us there. Now, look, you don't want to come along. You get your own self out of this fix. Well, we best be fast about it then. Come on. you go on to bed, I'll turn those on. I thought you'd gone to sleep. No, I felt a little restless, so I thought I'd do some work on the payroll. Good night. Good night. You get the house.
leave it burned. I said leave it. Talk to the sheriff, the Cordilli's brothers. I didn't think they'd make it without her. Well, perhaps Dilly would have made it if she hadn't come back for you. Never did get around to returning the saddle. Why didn't you? I don't know. So you going for a ride? Mm-hmm. You know, I got a hundred things to do, but mind if I go along? I was just about to ask you. Exactly what I'd buy for myself, but I kind of like it. 